up to 15% of colon cancer patients and 5 to 12% of rectal cancer patients will have tumors adhering to adjacent organs. Current guidelines for open colon and rectal cancer surgery recommend on block resection to manage locally advanced adherent colorectal tumors. Histologically negative margins achieved with on block resection are considered curative. Preoperative cross sectional imaging, including CT scan, MRI, or ultrasound, might suggest a bulky tumor invading adjacent structures. Laparoscopic resection is feasible in experienced hands. The ability to perform arm block resection laparoscopically depends on the structure to which the tumour is adherent, as well as on the surgeon's skill and experience. For the girl, this curative resection, intraoperative discovery of a T4 lesion often requires conversion unless the surgeon is able to effectively resect the lesion arm block. However, arm block resection might not be possible using either technique and therefore the surgeon must decide whether conversion is likely to allow curative resection. Occasionally, the laparoscopy may become diagnostic, with closure followed by re-imaging and multidisciplinary consultation prior to a definitive resection at a later date. In some situations, based on the initial laparoscopy, the girls of surgery may shift from cure to palliation. To date, there have been no randomised trials comparing laparoscopic and open approaches to T4 colonic or rectal cancers. This video shows a laparoscopic dissection of a T4 colon cancer. A 62-year-old female patient with a previous history of hypothyroidism and dyslipidemia with a BMI of 19 kilos per square meter. The patient presented with significant anemia, weight loss and fatigue. A colonoscopy was performed showing an ulcerative stenotic lesion 25 cm from the anal verge, which did not allow endoscope passage. To complete the study, we performed an abdominal CT which showed a mass compatible with the descending colon primary neoformative process with a diameter of 5 cm invading the adjacent fat and with small lymphadenopathies. There were suspicious signs of invasion of the left psoas muscle in contact with the left ureter as it crosses the iliac vessels without dilating. Invasion of the left ovarian vein was found, but not of the ovary. The study was completed with a colonal CT and a PET with no other significant findings. It was decided to place a pigtail catheter in the left ureter 24 hours before surgery to help with its location and avoid injuries.